everyone, welcome back. We are out on my patio. We're gonna be making this amazing Dollar Tree Tipsy Pot, as well as some other fun and fabulous crafts today. So if you guys are new, subscribe to my YouTube channel and join my little romantic home family. Thank you guys again for being here and let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns. Get out your glitter and paint and let's get to crafting. I'm so excited to share with you all how to make this super awesome Dollar Tree Tipsy Pot. So you're gonna grab four Dollar Tree garden planters and I chose the larger one because I wanna make a really large Tipsy Pot and I used an attachment on my screwdriver to drill the holes with. You could also use a hot glue gun, the end of that, and just heat it up. So the next thing you wanna do is take a broom handle or any kind of long um, PVC pipe that you can add to the center of it and this is just a Dollar Tree little broom handle and I'm adding a bag of the Dollar Tree potting soil to the base of this. The next thing I had an idea to do was to add um, numbers to the outside of this. Now you guys can use your house numbers and this is not my actual house number but um, I thought it would be a fun idea to share with you guys this part of it if you wanted to do this. Now I'm using the Dollar Tree poster board um, stickers and I'm just gonna stick those on and then spray paint over those. I'm using the Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint and that is really a great spray paint. I've also heard that you can spray a layer of spray Mod Podge on first, then add your spray paint. So I have yet to try that, but I may try that because I did notice that it scratched off fairly easily, but you can also seal it with some Mod Podge or a acrylic sealer. Now, I wasn't in love with how these letters looked, so I just ended up adding the poster board letters back on and then adding a layer of waterproof Mod Podge on top of that. Now for my tipsy pot part. So I just, I changed to the white Dollar Tree broom handle and I just shoved that down inside of my pot and then you take your first pot, you tip it all the way to the side, then you take your second pot and you tip that to the other side. And I did add some rocks on top of my dirt because I don't want my tipsy pot blowing away. So here's how it looks so far. Now I didn't have foam to put inside of here and I wanted to add some fake flowers because I haven't really bought a whole lot of real flowers yet. We still have um, a little bit of frost that could happen. So I'm just holding off on doing any real plants yet. But I did add some of these Dollar Tree fake plants. They have some really nice fake greenery out this year and it's plastic, so it'll definitely be weatherproof. And so I just added some little pool noodle down in there and then I'm just, um, placing my little greenery in there, just kind of scattering it about, making it look kind of wild and whimsical. And then I'm using some of the Dollar Tree Celsius grass and moss mixed together and just adding that to the top. And you can see I bent my broom handle over. It was a little bit too long. I thought I was gonna, you know, cascade some ivy down on it, but I wasn't crazy about that. They're really flimsy, so they're pretty easy to bend in half. So here is how it's looking. Let me know what you guys think. This is the first time I have ever made a tipsy pot and I felt like it came out pretty good. I did have a little wobble with the back of one of them. I set it on the side of my little patio here and it flopped off and so it got a crack in it. So just be careful, these are not the most sturdy pots. You can definitely go to Walmart you know, and get like a clay pot if you wanted to. But I thought for doing this on the cheap, it came out pretty fabulous. Um, I really encourage you guys to try one of these. It was so much easier than I thought it was gonna be. I really thought it was gonna be way harder. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are loving this one. Now for this Dollar Tree DIY, I have to share with you guys an amazing little table topper storage basket idea. So you're gonna take two of the Dollar Tree paper towel holders and then two of the little wire baskets that you can find in their organizing section and then you're going to need eight zip ties total. So I'm gonna take and I'm going to line the basket up and just zip tie one end and then the other end. And that way I know that my basket is on straight. And then the next thing I wanna do is trim off the ends of the zip tie and then begin to zip tie the other part of the paper towel holder. Now you guys, this is such a fun and fabulous idea if you need an easy, little storage container um, that's like a two-tiered storage container. This would be great for fruit, um, table toppers, cr crafts. Um, what I'm going to use it for is to hold some silverware on my outdoor table. We had a little get together over the 
weekend and I really needed some ways to add storage to the top of my table without taking up a lot of room. Now for this top part, again, you wanna make sure your basket is lined up. I did have to go back in and redo the zip ties on the top because it wasn't quite lined up all the way. So try not to get frustrated, um, make sure you get them lined up. And then once you have them on, it is really actually a really sturdy little creation. The other thing is, is I went and put a ton of weight in the top basket, um, just a little FYI. It's sturdy, but it tended to kind of rock back and forth just a tiny bit, you know, if you had something like really heavy in it, I'll put your heavier stuff on the bottom. Anyway, now I'm going to take some Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint in the black, and I'm just going to give the entire thing a coat of spray paint. That way, my little paper towel holders are a little bit more cohesive and less paper towel um, holder looking and it matches the cute little basket. Okay, so here is how it looked with some of my faux muffins popped in here. Now, you would wanna put a basket liner down if you're gonna put actual real food. Um, and then I also just popped in like some little um, pretty napkins and some silverware and you guys this is such a fun and easy way to create storage in a small space you could also put this on a vanity table this would be amazing for a craft room you could even put like some little storage organizers on the side really the sky is the limit you guys get totally creative with this have fun and go for it This Dollar Tree DIY, I have to share with you all how to take some of those Dollar Tree mirrors and make a beautiful, elegant centerpiece. So you're gonna flip them over and then with two zip ties, you're going to zip tie the little part that has like the little spiral edge there. And you just want to gently zip tie each one of them and don't tighten them until you get them both on there. You don't wanna zip tie them too tight because you don't want your little mirror centerpiece to pucker. The next thing I wanted to do was add one more to the edge and that's gonna give it longer length. And then you can zip tie the other two, one to the top and one to the bottom. That's how I wanted to do it. Or you could make a big long table runner by zip tying them all in one diagonal direction. So really the sky is the limit on this one. You could even put foam board back behind it to stabilize it and turn it into a wall decor piece. I have been racking my brain on how to put this together. I knew I wanted to do a centerpiece with these mirrors, but I was trying to think about ways to glue these together. And then once I thought of my black zip ties, I knew those exactly would be the perfect thing to work. And they were so sturdy. They held on there really, really well. And so I was just really excited. You know, when you're trying to think of a craft and you have crafting supplies and you know what you want to make, but you just can't figure out the mechanics of it. That was me with these mirrors. And then once I figured this out and that that was going to work and be sturdy, I was over the moon excited. So check this out. Here is how it looks. And it's beautiful as is. I decided to go ahead and just give it one whole coat though of black spray paint so it can go in my back porch aesthetic. You could also use gold, copper, pink, purple, blue, anything you love. You could cover up the mirrors while you're spray painting them so that they would stay mirrors. I didn't want these to stay mirrors. Um, Again, I just want it just to be all black for this one. So, but there's so many options that you guys have with this. And again, I am using that Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint. Definitely not sponsored, but I love the Rust-Oleum spray paint. It just holds up really, really well. You could also add um, a layer of acrylic sealer as well if this um, project is going to get quite a bit of use. But check how elegant it looks. Um, a painted black. I was so excited for this. Okay, so here's my table centerpiece idea. You just pop it into the centerpiece of any table and then you can layer 
um, textural elements on top or to the side. It's beautiful for candles. I think this would be beautiful on a bridal table. And I'm going to share with you guys how to make that little textural basket element. So for this, I just popped my little DIY lantern. I'm also going to share with you guys how to make the lantern, some pretty faux florals, a beautiful candlestick, and then some of these flickering flameless candles, which I absolutely love. They're so safe. They're battery operated and they come with a remote timer. You guys have to check them out. I'll leave some in my Amazon store for you. I'll link it in the description box below, but how elegant is this and fabulous on a teeny tiny budget. So I saw these wall baskets on the Pottery Barn website and they were $449 and I decided we could dupe something similar to this using Dollar Tree supplies. So for this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree charger and then this rope and I picked this rope up at um, Harbor Freight actually for $4.99 and it came on this huge gigantic roll. I got a couple of rolls so we can do some neat um, summery coastal DIYs with it. But to create this basket wall art, you're just gonna take your ropes. You can use nautical rope from Dollar Tree. You can order some off Amazon or you can get some from your hardware store. You're gonna start in the center and you're just going to twist it and then hot glue. And then you're going to twist and hot glue and you're going to continue to twist and hot glue your way around this entire charger. You can use a bowl with a little lip um, really so many ideas. You can use an old thrift store plate, something that is headed for, um, you know, the thrift store. You can renew an old plate with this. And I also have to give a shout out to my sweet friend, Liz at Liz Fenwick DIY. She creates these all the time and makes the most amazing, um, Pottery Barn dupes of these. You guys are going to have to go check Liz's channel out. I absolutely adore her, but this was the first time I had ever tried this. And I will tell you that kind of one of the secrets to this for me was to be patient. So I had a little bit of a hard time being patient with this because you really need to press the rope down and hold on to it as you glue. And you are going to need to make sure you have quite a bit of glue. I use several glue sticks and also quite a bit of rope. So those are just my tips from me to you, but this is a relatively simple project. I wouldn't say it was like a super hard one. It just takes some patience. <laughs> Off and then tuck that little edge back behind it and give it a big old dollop, dollop of hot glue. I think this was probably the hardest part for me was to cut that really thick rope. Here is how it turned out. Listen, I think for about three, four, five dollars that it took to create this versus the four hundred and forty nine dollars. And I believe that was for three baskets. We did amazing. OK, so I'm taking a paper clip and some E6000 glue. I want to give it a hanger in case I do decide to hang it up and then some hot glue. And then I'm just going to taste take a piece of uh, kind of sturdy cardboard from one of my crafters square creation buys. And I just pop that back behind it so you can use it as a wall hanging. I wanted to share with you guys how you can do that. Now for this setting, I wanted to share with you guys how I'm using it as a textural element in my tablescape popped on top of those little Dollar Tree mirrors that we did. And then I put a lantern on top of it. I felt like it looked really high end and fabulous. I know Pottery Barn is always sharing this kind of real natural look. So here's that little wall centerpiece that we did. And then here's that textural element, which I just think it's so nice to layer shiny things and baskety things and all of that kind of fun stuff. <laughs> I'm really excited for this next DIY. I'm going to take four Dollar Tree picture frames and I'm going to take the glass out and also remove those little tabs. Secret to removing those tabs is to pull them outwards and down 
or inward and down. So they need to kind of go inward and down. I took some E6000 glue and I added some dabs of E6000 glue to the corner of my frames and then put the glass back in. You could also add a little bit of hot glue too. Um, I did that for speed purposes, just so I could get this DIY done to share with you guys. But I recommend adding the E6000 glue and then letting it dry overnight. If you have time to do that, um, it's a little bit sturdier way to do it. So once you have all of your tabs removed and all of your glass glued in, then you can begin to make your little lantern. So I added some E6000 glue and some hot glue down the side of this. Again, the E6000 glue is your permanent hold, your hot glue is your temporary hold. Now this spot right here, I think you guys should wait and don't work on the project for about an hour or so. But if you need to get it done, like I did, you can go ahead and add another layer of E6000 glue and hot glue. I just feel like it needs to sit up as you add each part of the frame. If you can see right back there, my frame kind of popped apart. So I did have to re-glue it in a couple of places. And so that makes it kind of messy. Now to give my seams a little bit nicer of an edge, I decided to use some of this Dollar Tree nautical rope, kind of to give it like a little bit of a beachy kind of farmhouse theme. It's gonna go outside. And so I just wanted it to just kind of be really chill. Like if you were doing kind of a rustic wedding or just a little rustic setting. I have this new patio that I've been trying to decorate and I really wanted a little lantern. I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on one, so I just thought this would be super fun. And the nautical rope really did help the corners hold up so much better. And it also covered my gluey spots for my work that I was a little bit sloppy with. So I added kind of three layers of the Dollar Tree nautical rope and the Dollar Tree nautical rope now is thinner. So it worked fine for this, um, but just a little FYI, it does take a little bit more than it used to just because it's a little bit thinner, but it's fine. I actually kind of enjoy working with it a little bit thinner. The next thing I want to do is create my tablescape. So I'm adding in those mirror, that mirrored centerpiece we did, that beautiful pottery burn basket dupe that we did, and then just some flickering flameless candles. Here's the first idea on how you can style your lantern. I grab these greenery pieces from Walmart because they're taller and they just look a little bit more high end, um, but they're only $3 a bundle, you guys. So you could style it with candles down inside, or you can take a beautiful candlestick, and I got this at Hobby Lobby 80% off during Christmas and pop a beautiful candlestick in and then add in your greenery. And if you don't want to see those stems, I just cut some little small pieces of lamb's ear and kind of like put that down inside of that just to give it a little bit more um, coverage or you could wrap the stems of your greenery. So here is how it looks all set up in here. I was so excited for this round of DIYs. As always, I ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be attempting to recreate or which one were you inspired that you saw and you're like, oh, I have some of those supplies and I can create something um, similar or different or what are you guys working on right now? I would love to hear. I'm so excited for this new season of summer decorating, spring decorating. So anyway, I love y'all and I'm so thankful and blessed to have you here. Now, don't forget also to pop over to my Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook page. We're having so much fun over there in my free little group. And I love seeing everyone's projects. I see all of your work. So thank you guys for all of your beautiful posts. I'm so proud of everybody over there. Thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. You guys, I am so thankful to have you all here. I hope everybody had a gorgeous blessed Easter and I have my little assistant Benji Bear here. He is ready for me to play with him. I don't know if you can see him. <laughs> But anyway, I can't wait to share more videos with you guys out on my patio. This is going to be so much fun. We've got an amazing season. Um, don't forget to follow me over on Facebook as well. I share several, several DIY videos a day over there, as well as I have a little Instagram page and I share a good morning cup of coffee with you guys. So anyway, I hope you guys are totally inspired to craft and decorate. We have a brand new season to get ready for. So I love y'all. I'm wishing you a gorgeous, fabulous, blessed day. I can't wait for our next video. And until then, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind one another and we'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.
love you.